Hello, my name is Benjamin Sear, and I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Michigan. Today I will be talking about our work on light commands, where we use lasers to inject audio into voice controllable systems. In recent years, we've seen technology develop to give more and more power to our voices. Instead of interacting with computers with traditional mechanisms like mice and keyboard, we can now speak to devices to use them. We call these devices voice controllable systems, or VCSs. These systems work by recording an audio signal with a microphone, using speech recognition algorithms to parse words out of this audio signal, and then performing commands based on the words it parses. Using VCSs, we can perform many operations from setting timers, making online purchases, or controlling other smart devices around the home. As we have given more power to our voices, there is a rising concern over the security of these devices. More power means there is more risk if an attacker can compromise a VCS. These concerns come out of several factors. Often there is a trade-off between security and usability. For example, you may want to give the user multiple chances to give a passcode to ensure the device is properly recognizing the speech correctly. But sometimes this can allow an attacker to brute force the code. These devices also often use third-party software to interact with other devices, sometimes bypassing security and privilege checks. And finally, and the one I want to focus on, is the fact that these devices blindly trust the microphones to make critical decisions for the user, and this is a big problem. Voice controllable systems are designed under an underlying assumption. Microphones capture acoustic signals. But I'm here to tell you that reality is a little different. Microphones actually capture acoustic signals and light signals. This little gap between the assumption of the VCS design and the reality of its implementation leaves open a potential attack vector. And this leads to two big questions. One, how does this laser injection affect voice controllable systems? And two, how can we protect VCSs against laser injection? In this research work, we sought to answer these questions and provided several contributions. We discovered and investigated what we call light commands, commands issued by light signal injection into MEMS microphones. We then analyzed the limits of this light-based vulnerability in many common VCS devices that use MEMS microphones. We found that in some devices, we can inject a command 110 meters away with the equivalent power of a laser pointer and show that this works through glass windows and between buildings. We then demonstrate the risks that this attack can have on smart speakers, smartphones, smart home devices, and cars with remote access. And finally, we suggest potential countermeasures to defend against this attack. To look at how we inject light signals into microphones, we first need to look at MEMS microphones, the microphones most used in voice controllable systems. Most VCS devices have acoustic ports visible on the outside of the device. These ports allow acoustic pressure waves to pass directly to a MEMS microphone where they can be measured. In many of these microphones, a parallel plate capacitor is formed out of a movable diaphragm and a stationary back plate. Whenever the diaphragm moves in response to acoustic pressure, the capacitance changes. This change is converted to a voltage signal by the onboard ASIC. In our experiments, we have found that these microphones do not only measure acoustic signals, but are sensitive to light signals. In particular, the output voltage of the microphone is affected by light irradiance which can be thought of as the optical power density of the light. By firing a focused laser beam into the acoustic port, we can inject arbitrary signals into the microphone simply by modulating the optical power of a laser, or in other words, changing the brightness of the laser beam. These are the three key ideas of laser signal injection. One, amplitude modulated light generates a voltage on the microphone output. Two, the higher the amplitude of the light signal, then the higher the amplitude of the voltage signal, meaning that we can make a stronger output signal, or in acoustic terms, a louder output signal, by increasing the amplitude of the laser modulation. And three, the conversion of light signal into voltage signal adds very little distortion within the range of audio frequencies, allowing arbitrary audio signals to be injected. These insights are what make the attack possible. But how is this working? Well, our current theory is that this light injection is the combination of two different physical effects. First, there is a strong potential of photoelectric effects on the ASIC itself. When light enters through the acoustic port, not all of it is absorbed by the diaphragm. A portion of the light actually enters the package, reflects off the backing, and hits the ASIC. When light hits the PN junctions present in the ASIC, there will be a generation of photocurrent, which will change the output voltage. Second, there is also the potential of photoacoustic effects, where light causes vibrations on the diaphragm due to thermal effects or other light material interactions. In this, in this case, the vibrations are interpreted as acoustic waves affecting the output signal. Seeing that we could potentially inject audio using this technique, we made a setup to convert audio from a laptop into a light signal that we can inject into a MEMS microphone. To do this, 
We take the voltage signal from the audio output of the laptop and feed it into the modulation input of a laser current driver. The driver simply converts the voltage signal into a current signal, which is necessary since the optical power of the laser diode is proportional to the current across it. The laser current driver also adds a DC bias to ensure that the laser diode stays forward biased. The laser is then aimed at the acoustic port of the microphone where it generates a voltage signal. Now that we have a basis for injecting arbitrary audio signals into microphones, we can use this to inject commands into voice controllable systems. The full attack is shown below. First, using a laptop, we record audio of someone speaking a voice command. For example, OK Google, open the garage door. We then play this recording, taking the voltage signal from the output of the laptop, amplify it with a simple audio amplifier, and then feed the signal into the modulation input of the laser current driver. The laser driver converts the voltage into a current signal, and by driving the current across the diode, we generate an amplitude modulated light signal, representing the voice command. When we aim this laser at the microphone port of a voice controllable system, it responds to the light as if someone had spoken the command. In order to measure the vulnerability of voice controllable systems, we obtained 17 different devices and performed two sets of experiments. In the first experiment, we used a very controlled environment to measure the minimum optical power that was required for the VCS to recognize different commands. To ensure laser beam accuracy and precision, we used scanning mirrors to allow us to perform precise and consistent aiming of the laser at the microphone ports. In the second set of experiments, we sought to investigate the maximum range of the attack. To do this, we added optics to the laser in the form of a telephoto lens. This piece of equipment was around $300, but greatly reduced the beam area at longer ranges. If you remember from earlier, when we reduce the beam area, the light irradiance increases, making the attack more effective. We tested two scenarios, one where an attacker only has access to a 5 milliwatt laser, equivalent to taking a diode out of a laser pointer. We were able to test this in a 110 meter hallway. In the second scenario, we moved up to a 60 milliwatt laser and fired it in a shorter 50 meter hallway. We had to do this in a shorter hallway because of safety concerns and using potentially harmful lasers. And here are the results. First, notice that these four devices, including the Google Home and Echo Plus first generation, required less than five milliwatts of optical power to recognize commands. We could inject signals into two of these devices at the maximum range of our 110 meter hallway. Next, notice that the majority of the remaining devices were all vulnerable at the max range of 50 meters at the higher power 60 milliwatt laser. This includes the more modern Echo Dots and the Google Nest camera. Finally, the results show that phones and tablets are the least vulnerable to these attacks, where we can only affect them at a range between five and 20 meters. After seeing we could inject signals from long range, we moved on to perform a cross-building attack to demonstrate how a real-world attack may look. We took our setup to a bell tower 70 meters from our office building, where we placed a Google Home in the office behind a glass window. We used a telescope to aim and focus. And here you can see the demonstration of the attack. Uh, from up top in the tower, we're injecting the command, OK Google, open the garage door. We're injecting it into the laser, where it's being focused by the telephoto lens and aimed at a Google Home in an office building 70 meters away. Uh, we're aiming directly at the microphone port and through a window. So let's hear it responds. Okay, opening. And it heard it. If you want to see more, our other demos and videos are posted at lightcommands.com. So what are the consequences of this attack? Well, since we can inject arbitrary commands into a VCS target, the consequences depend heavily on the power of the victim's voice. If the victim's voice can disable and enable various smart devices around the home, then so can the attacker. If the victim can make online purchases with voice, then so can the attacker. We found several ways that voice can be used to open smart locks, open garage doors, or even unlock cars remotely. It all depends on what commands the victim has set up to interface with their devices. We successfully performed all of these attack scenarios, so please refer to our paper for the detailed description of what can be done with light commands. After exploring what we can do with light commands, it is important to discuss the limitations of the attack. During our experiments, we found that the success of the attack is strongly dependent on laser focusing, aiming, environmental acoustic noise, and audio quality of the injected recording. If any one of these factors is changed even slightly, the success rate drops drastically. It's also important to realize that we need line of sight to pull off the attack. Light will not diffract or reflect in the same way that sound does, meaning that if we have no line of sight on the microphone port, then the attack will not work. This is especially important as many VCSs have microphones on the top of the device, which are difficult to target with a laser. 
Finally, without special equipment, the attacker will have no audio feedback, making it difficult to respond dynamically to protective measures such as liveness tests. Now how can we prevent these attacks? There are two main approaches we can take. One, utilizing the hardware already present, we can take several software approaches. Stronger authentication mechanisms for privileged commands will already help greatly. Liveness tests in the form of simple randomized questions are also a strong option, as an attacker has no audio feedback from the target. Finally, since these devices ha already have multiple microphones, sensor fusion techniques may be used to detect if one of the microphones is under laser attack. It increases the complexity of the attack if multiple microphones need to be injected simultaneously. Looking to the future, hardware changes should be made with a focus on blocking light from entering the microphone port. This can be done at a device level with fabrics, but it can also be done within the MEMS microphone itself, as demonstrated by certain microphone designs that block quick pressure spikes, but also block light from directly entering the microphone port. This research opens up several different avenues of future work. A good next step is to deeply explore the physical causality of the attack as strong models of the physical effects on the microphone may lead to clues about future defenses. This attack is also not limited to MEMS microphones, as we have some results on larger electret condenser microphones. There may also be some effects on other motion sensors such as gyroscopes and accelerometers, leading to new vulnerabilities. If you are interested to look into the related works about voice controllable systems, please see these other works investigating the security of these devices. Finally, to summarize, lasers can inject commands into voice controllable systems. This can be accomplished at long range and with low optical power. This is possible due to a physical vulnerability in MEMS microphones and highlights the security flaws present in voice controllable systems, especially the blind trust of their microphone inputs. Finally, we should be aware of the power that is given to the voice. Thank you. And you can contact me or the Light Commands team at the email addresses below, and I look forward to the Q&A session.